Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We started a series about the companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And in the last week, you heard about Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an. Next to Abu Bakr comes Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an in the list of the ten blessed companions. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an belonged to the tribe of Banu Adi that was a branch of Quraysh. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was known in Makkah for his bravery and for his physical strength. And he used to participate in the events of wrestling and no one could stand in front of Hazrat Umar. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was also known for his to be short-tempered and the people were afraid of the rage of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. But besides that, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was also a fond of Arabic literature. He was very expert in Arabic literature and poetry. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was the only person amongst our four rightly guided caliphs who was an idol worshipper at the time of the advent of Islam. And all the companions who were idol worshippers, they opposed Islam in the beginning because Islam talks about monotheism and they used to believe in polytheism. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was also against Islam and he had a slave girl named Lubaina. He used to beat her so much that he used to get exhausted and then he used to say that when I will get fresh I will beat you again until you leave Islam. So he was opposing Islam that, that much in the beginning. But looking towards the influence of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an in the town, Holy Prophet peace be upon him prayed for his guidance. And when Suli Prophet peace be upon him said, Oh Allah, support Islam either with Umar bin Khattab or Amr bin Hisham. Amr bin Hisham was Abu Jahl and he was very influential in the town. So the Holy Prophet peace be upon him made this prayer on Thursday and on the very next day, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an accepted Islam. On Friday, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was informed by some people in Makkah that Islam is growing gradually and the people are abandoning idol worshipping and Muhammad is getting fame and popularity in Makkah. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an said that I will finish him today and he picked up his sword and he was rushing towards Dari Arqam. On the way, a person saw him having the naked sword in his hand and rushing to some place. So his name was Nuaim bin Abdullah and he was also a Muslim but he used to hide his Iman. He asked Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and that Umar, where are you heading? Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and was fearless and he said, I'm going to kill Muhammad. So Nuaim bin Abdullah thought that how can I stop him from going towards Dari Arqam where the Holy Prophet peace be upon him was sitting with his Sahaba. So Naim bin Abdullah disclosed a very old secret and he informed Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and that you are talking about Muhammad, don't you know that your sister and your brother-in-law have also accepted Islam. It was a secret, Hazrat Fatima, the sister of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala was a Muslim since a long time but she was hiding her Iman from her brother because Hazrat Umar was very much against Islam in the early years. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and when he got to know about this, he turned towards his sister's house and he stormed into the house and he reached because in an unexpected time. So there was a companion, Khabbab ibn Arad, who was there to teach Quran to Fatima and her husband, Saeed bin Zaid, who is also one of the ten best companions and he was the brother-in-law of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and. Hazrat Umar found them reciting the Holy Quran and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala started beating Sa'id bin Zaid and he uh, threw him on the ground. Then Fatima came to defend her husband, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala slapped her also. But Hazrat Fatima understood that Umar had got to know about our Islam. So she said that Umar, you can do whatever you want but we will never leave Islam. On this Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala uh, was embarrassed also and he thought that what is there in Islam that even a lady can say in front of Umar that you can do whatever you want but we will never leave Islam. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and said that you people were reciting some literature or something. Show me what was that. But Hazrat Fatima said you need to be pure for it first. So Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and got purified and then Hazrat Fatima gave that literature of the Quran to Hazrat Umar and it was Surah Taha. 
all the surahs which were revealed in Makkah were very, very impressive in its literature. They are poetical in style, the verses are short and rhyming. And as I told you that Hazrat Umar was fond of literature and Hazrat Umar himself was a great expert in the literature. So when Hazrat Umar went through the literature of Surah Taha, he was so impressed and he said that it was this literature which I was opposing since a long time. And he decided to accept Islam. He understood that it is really the word of God. That was actually the prayer of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him, which Allah accepted within a, uh, within a day. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu mind got changed. Holy Prophet peace be upon him said that the heart of a human is in the two fingers of God. Allah can turn it any way whenever he wants. So Allah can give guidance to anyone whenever Allah wants. Now Hazrat Umar was going again towards Sari Arqam and uh, the intention was totally different. Now he was not going to kill the Prophet but now he was going to accept Islam and to become his supporter. But from inside the Tari Arqam, from the chinks of the door, the companions used to look outside. A companion said, Ya Rasulullah, Umar is coming and he is having the sword in his hand and we don't know what are the intentions of Umar. But Hazrat Hamza, who accepted Islam little before Hazrat Umar and he was also very brave, he said, let him come. If Umar is coming with a bad intention, I will kill him with his own sword. But when Hazrat Umar arrived, Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, stood and welcomed him and said, Umar, I prayed for your guidance and I think that Allah has accepted my prayer. So Hazrat Umar said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah, I am here to say, There is no God but Allah and you are the messenger of Allah. All the companions sitting around the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, were shocked when they saw that Umar was reciting Shahada. And then they started exclaiming takbir Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar so loudly that even Makkah said what happened that why Muslims are so happy so then they got to know that Umar has also accepted Islam Muslims were never happy that much as they were happy on the conversion of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala accepted Islam Muslims got confidence now it was not only a group of weak people but now the strongest men of Makkah were there in the fold of Islam to support the cause of Allah's religion. And when Hazrat Umar accepted Islam, the amount of persecutions also reduced because he himself used to torture. That was over. And in the presence of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, others were not feeling free to torture the Muslims. And it was the first time when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala took all the Muslims to the Kaaba and Muslims offered the prayers openly. And Quraysh couldn't do anything because Umar was there with Muslims. Hazrat Umar used to ask Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you fight against Quraysh? You should fight for your rights and for your religion. But jihad was not permissible in Makkah because, you know, Muslims were very less in number. Most of the Muslims were very weak people. So that's why Allah didn't allow jihad. They could not fight against the powerful Quraysh at that time. But there was a command in the Quran in Makkah life to be patient and to ignore and not to retaliate. So Hazrat Umar waited until the time came for migration. All the Muslims used to migrate secretly. They were afraid of Quraysh that they can kill us, they can imprison us. But Hazrat Umar went to the Kaaba in the daylight when all the people were sitting around and Hazrat Umar announced loudly that today I am leaving Makkah and I am going to Medina and if someone wants his wives to become widows and his children to become orphans, he can try to stop me. And no one was there to stop Hazrat Umar from migrating. In this way, he honored Islam, that there are people in Islam community who can do whatever they want freely and they are not afraid of anyone. After his arrival in Medina, Hazrat Umar did lots of things for Islam. First of all, when Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was asking the Sahaba about the way how to call people for Salah. So in those days, Hazrat Umar had a dream about Azan and then Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered Hazrat Bilal to go and deliver the Azan. Hazrat Umar also got the honor to become the son-in-law 
to become the father in law of the holy prophet peace be upon him because holy prophet peace be upon him married his daughter hazrat hafsa radiyallahu ta'ala anha hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala an never expected that he will get such a great honor which the holy prophet peace be upon him gave him that he made him his father in law Hazrat Umar radiyallahu ta'ala and was extremely wise and intelligent and it happened many times that the revelations came after the suggestion of Hazrat Umar radiyallahu ta'ala there are around 28 verses in the holy quran which ulama have identified which came after the suggestion of Hazrat Umar to support his point of view like in the battle of badr when holy prophet peace be upon him asked his uh, sahaba what to do with the captives of badr hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala an was saying ya rasulullah you should kill them all it is the first time when allah has given you control over your enemies so set such an example that they will find no courage in future to come out against you in any battle but you know that holy prophet peace be upon him was mercy for the world he said umar we have killed already 70 people in the battle and you are asking me to kill the remaining 70 it will be too much so holy prophet peace be upon him followed the suggestion of hazrat abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala and he took ransom and set them free but then allah revealed a verse in the holy quran in surah al-anfal in which allah said ma kana li nabiyyin an yakuna lahu asra hatta yusghira fil ard turiduna arad ad-dunya wallahu yuridu al-akhirah that it's not befitting for a prophet to take the worldly things from the enemies of allah but you had to do the bloodshed and holy prophet peace be upon him said that umar was right and our opinion was wrong here similarly when holy prophet peace be upon him had the walima of zainab bin jahash it was a very lavish walima which holy prophet peace be upon him served and in those days hijab was not obligatory on women so when the guests used to come to the house of holy prophet peace be upon him the wives of the holy prophet peace be upon him sometimes they used to come in front of the guests to meet them or to serve them but hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala and suggested that ya rasulullah you should ask your wives not to come in front of other men it is against your honor they should remain in a separate room and then allah sent down the verses in surah al ahzab and allah made hijab obligatory on women and the holy quran says ya ayyuhan nabiy qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'i al-mu'minin yudnina 'alayhinna min jalabi bihin o messenger o prophet say to your wives and your daughters and the women of believers to draw their cloaks around themselves similarly there was a time when wine was haram only in the time of prayer and otherwise in other times it was halal hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala and asked allah that oh allah please give us a clear cut command about wine whether it will remain halal or haram whatever you will ask us we will start following your command and then allah sent down the final verses about the prohibition of wine chapter number 5 verse number 90 in which allah made khamar haram and called it rijsum min amal ash-shaytan fajtanibu that it is a satanic action that you must not approach it similarly hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala an tried to stop holy prophet peace be upon him when he was going to lead the funeral prayer of abdullah ibn ubay the leader of munafiqin hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala an held the prophet's hand and he was pulling him and he was asking him that do not go to lead the prayer for him why you are praying for him he was a hypocrite he tried to to create difficulties for you throughout his life and you are praying for him but holy prophet peace be upon him being rahmatul lil alamin said that i will pray for him may allah will forgive him and save him from jahannam and he offered the prayer but later on allah sent down a verse in surah tauba chapter number 9 verse number 84 in which allah said wala tusalli ala ahadin minhum mat abada wala taqum ala qabri that after this day you are not going to pray for any of the munafiqin and you will not stand near their grave to pray for them and allah also said in another verse that muhammad if you will pray even 70 times for munafiqin i will never forgive them allah is so angry with munafiqin because of their activities against islam and hazrat umar was asking him not to pray for him even before but due to his mercy holy prophet peace be upon him prayed for him so there are many other occasions where hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala said something and later on allah sent down a verse to support it 
for that maybe holy prophet peace be upon him said about him Lokana Ba'adi Nabi and Lakana Umar, if there would be any prophet after me, Umar would be the prophet. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala was also given the title of Farooq. Farooq is the one who can differentiate between Haq and Batil very easily. As we can differentiate between white and black so easily, similarly Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala could differentiate between Haq and Batil quickly and correctly. And that's why he was given the title of Farooq. And Hazrat Umar ta'ala was uh, a participant of all the battles. There was not a single event in the life of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, where Umar ta'ala was not present in all the battles and the treaties and the journeys for Umrah and Hajj. Hazrat Umar was always there. And at the time of Treaty of Dabiya, Hazrat Umar ta'ala became very emotional. Because you know that apparently the clauses of the treaty were looking against Islam and they were looking in the favor of the Quraysh. And Hazrat Umar ta'ala had a strong thinking about justice. He was very firm in justice and he never accepted anything which was against the rules of justice. So that's why Hazrat Umar ta'ala did not want to sign the treaty of Adabi and he became very emotional and he came to the Holy Prophet and said that aren't you a true messenger of Allah? Isn't Islam a true faith? And why you are signing this treaty? This is insult of Islam and Muslims. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq ta'ala asked Hazrat Umar to stop arguing on it and let him do whatever he wants. You know that only Hazrat Umar ta'ala was supporting the treaty of Adabiya and when Allah sent down the ayat about the treaty of Adabiya, inna fatahna laka fatahan mubina, and Allah called it a manifest victory, then Hazrat Umar ta'ala apologized what, and he said that I was not understanding the wisdom underlying the treaty of Adabiya. And at the time of Tabuk expedition, when the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, asked for donation, Hazrat Umar brought 50% of his wealth. And his 50% wealth was more than the 100% of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. And Hazrat Umar was expecting that at least today I will win, I will beat Abu Bakr in this good deed. But when he reached the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, he got to know the question was different. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was asking, Ma khallafta ya Umar, what did you leave for your family? And he said, 50%, Ya Rasulullah. And then Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, asked Abu Bakr, what did you leave for your family? He said, nothing. Allah and the Messenger is enough for my family. And in this way, again, Hazrat Abu Bakr was the first one and the top of the list who donated. Hazrat Umar played a very important role in the appointment of Hazrat Abu Bakr as Caliph. He was the first person who stood and took place on Hazrat Abu Bakr's hand. And throughout the Caliphate of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, he was an advisor of Hazrat Abu Bakr. He worked with him as his right hand and he gave many good ideas to Hazrat Umar to Hazrat Abu Bakr, especially regarding the compilation of the Holy Quran. He did not just give the idea of compilation to Abu Bakr, but he convinced him and he got the Holy Quran compiled. These are some valuable services of Hazrat Umar before becoming the Khalifa and what he did as a Caliph. We will discuss it in some other video. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.